Good morning, Kentucky. I'm Dan Reefer with a look at sports. The undefeated U.K. women's team facing rival Louisville in Memorial Coliseum, trying to snap a five-game losing streak to the Cards. Over 7,000 coming out in support of the Cats, complete with U.K.'s famous dancing fan. Well, after building a 23-point halftime lead, U.K. does not let off the gas. Crystal Riley, the transfer from LSU, playing in her first game for Kentucky, gets the bucket and the whistle. Amber Smith running the break, one of her five assists here on the no look to Victoria Dunlap. 27 points, 9 rebounds, 8 steals for Dunlap. Adia Mathis, the Louisville native, flips it up and in. She had 15. UK forces a school record 38 turnovers and not only wins, but embarrasses Louisville. 101-67 the final. UK improves to 10-0, setting the new record for best start in school history while ending that five-game losing streak to Louisville. Well, it's a good win. We lost five in a row. Tried not to talk a lot about that this week because this uh, addition had never lost to them. This team hadn't, so we didn't need to carry the baggage of the previous five teams, so we just needed to try to play our game. But clearly it's a rivalry game, and uh, our, our players were just so focused all week. Our goal was to play the way we played. Pedal to the metal, 40 minutes, and I thought our team did a fantastic job doing that. John Calipari has set a new record for best start to a season by a U.K. coach in his first year. And now tonight, his Cats have a chance to win game number 2,000 all time. So with this 11-0 start and all the talk about becoming the first college program in history to 2,000 wins, how is it affecting the team? Calipari says it's made his guys arrogant. There's a difference between arrogance and a swagger. A swagger comes in, and everyone knows we're working harder than this other team. Arrogance is, we're 11 and 0, and everybody says, I'm the best, and watch this. And now, all of a sudden, the other team outworks you, they out hustle you, they beat you to balls, they play with more energy, and all of a sudden, you get beat. We're trying to guard against that, and it's hard because these guys are young, and the information out there and what's being said is, you know, they, they read it and start thinking they poop ice cream. Well, if they're arrogant now, imagine if Coach Cal's Cats keep winning. 11 games in, it's a little early to be talking perfect season. I mean, really, that's crazy talk, right? It's very realistic. We hadn't lost yet, but it has to be a one-game approach. I mean, it's possible. It's hard to do. But it's reachable, but very hard to do. We just have to come to work. So you're saying there's a chance. (laughs) <laughs> the football cats have one more practice today before breaking, then reconvening in Nashville tomorrow. If today's practice turns out anything like yesterday's, Rich Brooks won't be happy. Wasn't particularly pleased with our effort out here or our focus today, and uh, um, we need to have a, a good one before we break tomorrow. We get to go home, go home for a day and, and on Monday, so as everybody's starting to get to that little mode, I haven't been home since the summer, so it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to focus like you want to, but you you just got to put all the things off the field out of your mind when you're on the practice field. The Bengals playing their first game since the death of Chris Henry. A moment of silence in San Diego in honor of Henry. is number 15 on the helmets of the Bengals. In the second quarter, Carson Palmer finds Chad Ochocinco for a 49-yard touchdown. The Bengals lead it here 10-7. Ocho obviously thinking of his fallen teammate right here following the touchdown. The game comes down to this. Tied at 24 with eight seconds left. Nate Kading's field goal wins it for the Chargers. 27-24 the final. Tough loss for Cincinnati, especially in the wake of Chris Henry's death. That's going to do it for sports this Monday morning.